what is up my fellow noobs of YouTube here is Captain We. we are now doing an impression of the Elder Scrolls Online the free without membership edition the Tamriel Unlimited um, I wanted to play this game for this from the start but the problem was that I don't like playing uh, and paying every month uh, so I kept on Guild Wars 2 and I kept on my regular other games and my PlayStation 4 now first and foremost this is not a complete review it's just um, an informal for those who are still on the edge not knowing what they want to do with this game if they actually want to try it uh, so if you're interested I suggest you to watch the video and I'm going to try to cover all the bases so, Elder Scrolls Online, what is it? It's basically an MMO with a skin of Tamriel, the Elder Scrolls that we know and love. If you think it is actually a mod of multiplayer like Skyrim and Moblivion, you're actually out of your league. This is basically and foremost an MMO. So, what does it mean? It means questing, leveling up, uh, searching, crafting, uh, I'll, all the elements you can actually think of that other MMO plays, you may actually have some um, elements from it. What I actually like about the Elder Scrolls Online, the first thing I like is obviously the lore. If you are an Elder Scrolls player, if you like the game and you want to share the lore, have more insight into the storyline, I have a bit of you know, knowledge around the world as of uh, its availability right now, because not of all Tamriel is available, um, you will absolutely love this game. I mean, the attention to details, uh, the environment, everything is in, is in there. Uh, the NPCs, they will always share some information that is actually very interesting to know and to care about. Now, if we think about the gameplay, The Elder Scrolls Online doesn't go out and be um, extremely, how to say, original. It is still a click and skill based MMO, so you will have your usual skill tree, you will have your potions, your ultimates and stuff like that. However, what is actually kind of nice is that you the combat is interactive, which means if you see a power attack coming on, you can actually block it and then stun your enemy for uh, making sure that he can actually, you know, use this timing to deal a bit more damage. And if, for example, a sorcerer is charging his spell to shoot at you in the face, you can actually interrupt him, which is kind of nice, which makes you, uh, when there is multiple foe alert and you have to be quick on those reflexes, Obviously, the attacks are quite uh, forthcoming. You will see them plenty, like they will shine yellow or they will shine red and you will know what you do. Uh, you need to do. So, this is quite nice. You also can dodge and can unroot yourself with um, various abilities. You can double tap to dodge in a different direction and you will usually see the area of effect of an incoming enemy attack, which will make you um, be able to, you know, get out of the path and remove as much damage as you can get. Another thing that is quite interesting is that every skill that you use will actually um, improve into the certain category that you're using. So for example, right now I'm using a knight, uh, the dragon knight, and I'm using some flame spells as well as two-handed weapons. So as long as I'm using both of those, uh, the skill will go up and I will unlock further skill tree and I will be able to basically get better with them. And this is actually pretty awesome because if I want, I can still be a Dragon Knight, but I can, you know, fight in all the kind of equipment I want. If I want to fight in freaking shorts and light armor, I can go forward and, you know, dual dagger or even a staff, I can do it. Obviously, it's not optimal because my skills tree and everything is not made for this, but I can still do it. And I'm sure there's people out there who does, who does ridiculous build and at the end of the day, they're still efficient. So this is quite nice. I mean, you have unlimited kind of possibilities to do here so you can actually have fun the way you want for the pve part you will have your usual questing so that means 
getting to people, talking to them, and basically getting some information, um, going some betrayal, talking to spirits to free them, uh, discovering treachery, uh, checking caves, anything that goes in usual MMO. Though something that is pretty awesome is that it's very interactive. So sometimes you'll have people coming along with you, they will do commentaries, and everything, everything in the game is voice acted. Now this seems like a little deal, but I mean for 2015, this is something very awesome. And it is kind of a cool requirement right now, like if I go back to Guild Wars and I just click on someone, and I just see text bubble, it kind of makes me feel a bit meh. But at the same time, I mean, Guild Wars does a lot of stuff better than uh, ESO. First start, jumping. I mean, I'm not an expert in jumping in any game, but ESO feels a bit clunky. Um, and the graphic parts are not exactly where it where it's supposed to be. I mean, it's not ugly by any measures, but it lacks something, it, it lacks a bit of life, it lacks a bit of colors maybe. Um, of course, this is not World of Warcraft, this is not League of Legends, so you'd expect to have a bit less color, a bit more realistic tone, but still, like, the draw distance is not that far, and the texture sometimes are very ugly, but overall, it looks quite good. I mean, the armor, uh, the character, the NPCs, the creatures, they are well detailed, nothing as much as a good modded Skyrim, but it will still feed your eyes plentiful. That being said, it is quite requiring on the machine, I mean, I'm running here on a 7090 ATI, a bit overclocked, and I'm having 26 to 30 FPS in cities. Of course, the graphics are maxed out, but I mean, like, it's not crisis here. That being said, for the soundtrack, you will not be disappointed. There are elements from Oblivion, from Morrowind, from Skyrim, all remastered with their own little touches, and it is absolutely delightful. I mean, We've been playing those games for nearly 10 years now, uh, some for even more if you talk about the Reina and Daggerfell. Um, but the, here it's just, I mean, amazing. The soundtrack, I, I'm not getting bored of it. It's Even if it's a bit redundant, it is very, very well composed. Um, it is also uh, very original, which makes the game feel kind of special. Another aspect that is quite interesting is the achievements. Every achievement that you do for a different task, clearing dungeons, clearing forts, killing enemies, um, completing quests, will actually uh, unlock some colors, which you can actually freely modify your equipment with. So, you don't need to be like level 40 or 30 to look awesome. You can still, at low level, have some decent look. So, overall, the PvE is kind of nice. I have to admit that I like going uh, across the fields of Tamriel and killing monsters and talking to the NPC. I'm interested in what they are saying. Sometimes it's a bit rubbish and sometimes you feel like, you know, you're repeating the same thing. Like, I don't know how many fucking spirit I've, uh, you know, unlocked or, you know, unchained from their fate. But, I mean, sometimes they're, it just feel a bit redundant. Now, unfortunately, there are some problems that comes with the PV element. First of all, the grouping is kind of rubbish. I mean, if you're starting a quest, if you have, like, done one step, you can't share it properly. The guy will have to basically just redo it from the start and you won't be able to um, catch up with him. So, that's kind of putting it undesirable. Um, however, some quests will share the objective. So, for example, if it's like killing a few uh, enemies, well, sometimes the counter will go up for uh, the group altogether. And sometimes you have to do it individually, which is kind of sucking because, I mean, it's an MMO. You want to play with your friends. Let's be honest here. Soloing an MMO is kind of boring. Um, so, they could actually have held this out. Uh, another problem is that there are some bugs, and when I say some bugs, it's, it's a bit ridiculous. Like, sometimes you need to kill a boss, and there is a lineup, which means, like, there are 30 person there waiting to kill the boss, and you have to wait until you have your chance to deliver the final blow to get the objective done. Now, it happens sometimes that there were some clipping issues, like I could see enemies behind walls, like I, I could not hit them. Uh, and they could not get to me, and sometimes I actually went through the ceiling or the roof and 
you know, I was stuck there. I had to teleport myself or the game simply just respawned me at another location. I would strongly suggest you to play with another person because you can actually teleport to them via the group menu and it will actually bring you to the way shrine and the way shrine if you're not near one is pretty expensive sometimes it's 300 gold and i mean 300 doesn't sound like a lot but i assure you when a mob gives you two or two or two three gold it's kind of expensive talking about expensive shit the horses are amazingly expensive they are not as expensive as the start though i heard they were 17000 now they're about i think 12000 11500 so it kind of makes you want to buy one at about level 15 16 if you un, uh, you know remove um, uh, fabric and defabric some objects because this is actually an important part of the game you have the ability to um, dismantle any kind of object that you get. It's armor, it's you know clothing, um, helmets, uh, weapons, staff. Anything can actually be like dismantled. So you can receive some part and actually get some experience for the crafting that you want to do. So, for example, right now I'm a blacksmithing, so I will be able to uh, extract some iron ore. Uh, or steel lingot from like swords and staff and shit like that that I can actually reuse later on to craft on my own. A uh, word of advice though, it's taking way too long for my liking. I mean, you have to research uh, threats for your weapons, you have to level uh, your skills up, like in Skyrim, and uh, that's actually nice, but the thing is, I've actually like dismantled about 500 objects right now, and I am barely level 8. I mean, this is this is grinding right there. And I don't like that. I mean, we could we could actually make it a little less grindy, a little bit less um, suffering. Because as it is right now, I think it's taking way too long. And if you take the membership uh, that you can still actually buy, it gives you a 10% boost, but it's not worth it. I think it's just ridiculous at this rate right now. Maybe I'm missing something, but so far I've tried to... Make it as fast and efficient as possible. Doesn't work really out for it. Something nice though is that the objects that you are crafting, you can put your own style on it. Which means, for example, if you want, uh, if you like the look of a Dietrich, if you like the look of an Elven or Orcish kind of armor, well, it will cost you the same thing for both armor, but you will have to use a special, uh, I um, how to say, stone. To make it look like another thing so this is kind of nice you can really stylize your character as much as you'd like and you can enchant weapons you can enchant every piece of armor though they're not using the soul gem as um the same way that we're used to so basically uh, now there's glyphs that you can put on your armors and equipment and the soul gems are mainly just made for reviving player and recharging your items uh, only the weapons though i've seen like the armor they don't they don't deplete themselves you just need to repair them to make sure that they're efficient so that's kind of nice for the pvp part i've played uh let's say about an hour and a half of it i've liked it half and half let's say the problem is mainly to know what the fuck to do when you start arriving there there's something like there's a big war and you can look at the campaigns there's about four servers or five i think on the european mega server and you can play with it, I mean, you can just register to the one that you like and it will reset after a certain amount of time. It's actually very well written. I'm on the 7 days uh, one right now, so for me it will only take 7 days to, you know, reset everyone back to their castles before we start invading Cyrodiil again. That being said, um, I often found myself like running around aimlessly, not knowing whatever the fuck to do and going from a castle to another to see if there's someone looking for groups and at some point I got into a group and this is where the start uh, the fun starts you will have you will meet about 24 other people that will clash against uh, other people that are defending castles lumber mill uh, um, you know forest um, farms and you can really see the heat you can really feel that people are trying to work together to make this work to make most of it and if I'm honest 
Uh, even if you want to play PvP badly, you will be sucking dicks at the start if you're not level 50 with the right equipment. I mean, I went there to level 16 and I could not do damage for shit. And I mean, like, I have basic skills here, but I'm supposed to tank a bit and I wasn't able to do even my 1v1. I just got raped over and over again. So, this is kind of bad, even if they're, like, boosting you up. So, if I'm level 16, they will still give me level 50 stats. Uh, so I have plenty of health, plenty of stamina, uh, plenty of magicka, but it's still not efficient. I'm still hitting like, you know, a butterfly and I'm receiving damage like crazy. So you can, I can still actually assist them and receive points from being there and dealing some damage. Uh, and it, they're actually pretty nice. So you they, like I played for an hour and a half and I got about, about 9,000, even 10,000 alliance points. And I can buy stuff with those points uh, that are pretty nice. I mean, I bought a full set of armor for about 2k of violence point, and I was maxed out at my level 16, which is kind of nice. And I mean, you can buy apalistas, you can buy uh, catapults and, and other siege weapon to help you destroy walls and help you defeat the enemies uh, before capturing the base. And you can really feel like people are working their best to make feel like there's a big camping going on there. Um, the horses, well, unfortunately, are kind of a requirement because uh, otherwise you'll be running like all the time. It's going to be very boring. Even with the assault uh, running um, skill, it's still going to take a long time to get from one castle to the other. So what I suggest is you log in, you get to a group and basically just take a, uh, you know, look at it. You, 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 work around your group, you get some islands point, you buy some stuff, and you go back to PvE, because otherwise you won't be able to do much, to be honest. So, that being covered, I, I played a lot of PvE, about 20 hours now, I played about 2 hours to an hour and a half of PvP, uh, and to be frank, $69 is a bit expensive, uh, but I'm a bit, I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit of an Elder Scroll fan, so I like what I'm seeing, I like the improvement they've made, uh, the combat is very fun, I have to admit that it's not revolutionizing for any matter, but it's it's nice, I like fighting dynamically, I like improving my character, uh, the loot could be a bit better, uh, to be honest, I mean, sometimes I'm killing 40 foes and I'm receiving just like shit all over and over again, and that's not really interesting. But I like the game and I suggest you to try it if you have someone to play with. Unf Otherwise, if you're playing solo and you're not really into the Elder Scrolls lore, you will kind of find it a bit boring, to be honest. So, I will keep playing it. I will try to get my character to max level and see if I can improve my crafting skills and maybe craft my own stuff before going back to PvP. But so far, uh, I've completed one of the section, uh, the Daggerfell. Uh, I don't remember the name. I think it was something like... Um, Glenumbra, yeah, there he goes, Glenumbra, and I completed it, took me about 15 to 20 hours, so mm, finishing the whole map of Tamriel as it is right now will take you about 180 hours minimum. This is without counting the PvP area, which is uh, actually in the center uh, of Cyrodiil, so you will have uh, the small village, the castle in the middle, uh, so that's kind of nice, but it's very, 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 uh, you know, completed. You have a lot of shit to do. And it will take you an immense amount of time to get everything done. So, in the end, um, I think Guild Wars, still, uh, Guild Wars 2 is still superior uh, in some aspect. Uh, but Elder Scroll Online uh, certainly have improved in, in itself immensely from what I've heard from the reviews and the Angry Joe show and shit like that. Uh, it's a viable MMO. If you're into the Elder Scroll, I, I suggest you guys give it a try. Uh, there's a bit of grinding to do, I have to admit, but overall, uh, I will keep playing, I'm not getting bored of it, and I have to admit that the voice acting, the soundtrack, and the combat saves the day. So, I hope you guys um, enjoy the video, if you want to know more about the, ga the game, you can actually just message me or comment, I will try to reply as soon as possible. Otherwise, keep stabbing, and have fun. Take care.